thank you very much to the organizers for having me here today and giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, and of course, uh, the previous meeting this week, having many fantastic conversations um, about magnetometry. It's been really, really exciting to be here and I'm looking forward to many more. Um, so my name is Carolyn. Uh, I'm working at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow in the Experimental Quantum Optics and Photonics group. I'm a PhD student there. So most recently, I've been working on noise suppression techniques uh, for unshielded magnetometry. So let's get started. Okay, so a bit about what motivates us. We're really interested in our group in uh, being really applications driven and mostly interested in unshielded magnetometry. Um, really our, our big goal is portable sensing um, and portable sensing for the kinds of applications that we're interested in really means in an unshielded environment. So this means any building, uh, any, you know, a field with power lines, as we've heard about earlier, can be pretty noisy. Um, and then maybe even putting a sensor on a drone. And these come with challenges, mostly in the form of environmental noise. Um, so we'd like our sensors to be compact and user friendly. Um, and then, you know, another big ask is Pico Tesla level sensitivity for the kind of applications that we're interested in. So how are we going to do this? Well, first we start in the lab. Um, in a nice, well-controlled environment. We have a double resonance, uh, single beam setup, the core of which is really this microfabricated cell, uh, which we've been making ourselves. Um, and it's both the core, uh, you know, literally and also figuratively, um, because we really want to build our portable sensors around these. Um, so in order to optimize and characterize these in a well-defined, well-controlled environment, we're using them in the lab first and foremost. Um, so what's actually going on in here? Well, we have a uh, single beam pump and probe uh, creating a net magnetization in the cesium cell. And then we drive this coherent precession at the Larmor frequency from some applied field, um, and then analyze that on a balanced polarimeter and demodulate in software at the field that we applied on the RF coil. So yeah, of course we have a really nice uh, three-axis Helmholtz coil set up in order to uh, look at the different orientational effects and also just define really uh, con well-controlled fields. Um, so, yeah, I should also mention that the, the cell is quite broad. Um, in terms of its absorption, it's got 700 torr of nitrogen buffer gas. So, a uh, typical signal that we work with in the lab is this kind of familiar to most uh, resonant response where we sweep the RF frequency through the Larmor frequency and look at the response. And we use this for characterization and optimization first and foremost. So for a relaxation rate of a kilohertz and a signal to noise around 3000, we have this idealized sensitivity or noise equivalent power of about three picotesla per root hertz uh, on a good day. Um, so of course this is a, a, a short single shot measurement and uh, you know, unrealistic for applied applications, but it's a really good way to kind of, how, how can we turn these dials in the lab to make this, make this sensor better? <coughs> so what a real signal of the, you know, a more uh, realistic and also useful signal looks like is applying a single frequency on the RF coil and monitoring the response. So I've, I've heard this referred to earlier in the week as open loop, if that's more familiar. Um, so we sit on this, sit around where we believe the alarm frequency should be, and we look at the response. And the noise in our lab is about 250 nanotesla peak to peak. Um, and what does this actually look like in terms of what we're dealing with? It's, it's mostly 50 hertz. So 50 hertz in its harmonics. Um, and it's a pretty noisy lab. So the the 50 hertz peak is really, really large, and all of the harmonics as well. And in particular, this 50 hertz peak is quite broad. So that becomes a problem if we want to resolve signals in the region of the 50 hertz. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, we also see uh, various things, interesting things like the air conditioning units right above the lab uh, and other experiments in the building. So how are we going to deal with this uh, periodic noise and generally magnetic noise in our lab and in our sensors. Well, we've got two kind of, you know, strategies uh, that we've chosen both software and hardware. Uh, software solutions we're interested in because they could be implemented in any of the sensors that we build um, quite easily. And then hardware solutions are a little trickier and it's trickier to keep them portable. Um, but yeah, that's something we've also been looking at. So I'll speak first about the feed forward. 
uh, scheme that I've been working on. So this is kind of an idea of how the periodic noise affects our sensor and expects the, uh, affects the response. Um, so we have this large amplitude mains noise uh, and it's almost on the order of the relaxation rate of our cell. So it's really slewing this resonant response as the field changes uh, left, right. We're really, we're coming up and down this dispersive feature uh, by a long way. So it's, yeah, of course it's going to be when you, anytime you have large amplitude noise, it's going to be tricky to resolve fields, small fields in that, that you're interested in. So the, in terms of what this noise looks like, of course we've seen the, uh, the free running signal. Uh, and when we zoom in a little bit, we can see that it's really messy. Um, it's not very clean, 50 hertz sine wave. Uh, we have all sorts of harmonics and interesting things going on. And I, it makes it tricky to filter if you're interested in signals around the 50 hertz line, um, because you really have to filter quite a long way to, to cancel this, as we've seen. So instead of filtering, we could try something, given that this is reasonably periodic, uh, we could try and feed forward and predict what it's going to do based on it being you know, reasonably stable over periods of time. So the way that we do this is uh, look at the resonant response as we've seen before, uh, take the Larmor frequency um, and do this over a period of time where we capture the f some of the 50 hertz cycles so that we know what the kind of average Larmor frequency in the, in the room is. Uh, so we feed this central frequency forward to a free running, uh, free running measurement um, and look at the response, looks pretty, pretty much like we've seen. And then what we do next is take the free running response and feed it directly to the next measurement. So over some period of time, we've looked at this free running signal, so maybe three or four seconds, and then we feed that data directly back into the feed forward, into the next measurement, uh, in order to predict what the 50 hertz is going to do over a period of time. And you can see that the response is much, much smaller. Um, and then conceivably you could also loop this uh, so that you can kind of continuous uh, feeding forward based on the noise that you've seen in your previous measurement. And basically the, the real crux is that we're able to follow the Larmor frequency of the magnetic field in the room more closely. Uh, so how have we done on this? Well, you can see from even the free running measurement we've managed to reduce the noise by a whole lot um, and even managed to like track small field changes as somebody puts a ball driver down inevitably in the lab or something like this. Um, and it's much more clear in the, uh, in the FFT here that we've managed to reduce the, the peak height in the, uh, the feed-forward measurement and then not only reduce the height but also the width. Um, so we've managed to get a noise suppression of 22 dB underneath the 50 hertz line um, and then for, we also get some improvement on the 150 uh, and the 100 because of course the, all of these are tied up in that first measurement that we've made. Um, we, we've also managed to get some uh, low frequency noise reduction, which is also really nice. So in order to kind of verify what we're doing here, we've made this kind of almost naive measurement where we apply a series of tones at the same amplitude um, across, the, across different frequencies. Um, and we've actually never really measured the bandwidth of a magnetometer in this way, but it turns out to be roughly what we would expect at around 700 hertz roll off. Um, and you can see that there's this really nice uh, flat region here um, as we, at, the, at the amplitude that we would expect, at the amplitude that we've applied, um, and that there's no kind of variation around where you'd expect in the 50 hertz uh, regime. So that's really good, and we're pretty pleased with that. Um, and we can, yeah, the nice thing, as I've said, is that you can implement this easily. Um, it can go to any of our sensors um, if, if that's kind of, if it's useful for the application that we're interested in. So how much better can we do when we actually go to two sensors? Well, this is very much uh, not a lab-based sensor. It's actually an office-based sensor at the moment. Um, so we've built uh, these portable sensors that are pretty much exactly the scheme that I described um, in, in the lab, um, but just very much miniaturized. Uh, and Stuart is going to speak a bit more about that tomorrow um, for the details. But in terms of noise cancellation measurements that we've done, uh, this is, we've, we've set two sensors up in a gradiometric configuration um, with some background noise, um, 50 hertz or wh you know, whatever, whatever, is, is in, uh, whatever is there. 
um, and we get this common mode noise cancellation for when you, when you have an, a signal that's present in one sensor and not in the other, you get this subtraction, and anything that's not, uh, not seen by one sensor uh, gets subtracted out. Um, or, yeah, gets, doesn't get subtracted out, but uh, you, anything that's not seen by one sensor is essentially your signal in that case. So this is really useful uh, for the 50 hertz and for any sort of like uh, mains noise that we've, we've ex been ex experiencing. Uh, but luckily, in addition to the, the usual magnetic noise, we have acquired a new noise source, uh, which, is, which is great, a uh, really interesting challenge. Uh, so the plasma acceleration group downstairs have recently bought and started a new laser. Uh, it's pretty high power, and they're modulating uh, this laser at 5 and 10 hertz. Um, so that's actually, we think, modulating the mains in the entire building, um, which is you know, really fun to, to figure out. Uh, so yeah, that's been an interesting challenge. Um, and you can see this uh, on the in the, the two sensor, portable sensor data. Um, you can see this really doesn't look a, a lot like the FFTs I've shown before, but that's because of this pretty wild uh, 5 and 10 hertz noise. So both of these sensors, despite having uh, different uh, cells with two different relaxation rates, et cetera, uh, respond as we would expect um, with yeah, reasonably OK noise floor. Um, and I should also say that there's a lot less 50 hertz here because it's taken in the office and the office is significantly quieter. Um, so when we actually subtract these signals, hopefully you can see here, um, in this black line you can really see the subtracted signal. Uh, so we've managed to suppress a lot of the 5 and 10 and all the harmonics uh, noise and then we've also had it, the, the spectrum flattens out really nicely. So that's a really good result. So I've spoken a bit about the, the two solutions um, that, we're, that we're trying to implement, so both software and hardware, um, and we've, we've been successful in both. Um, and then basically what we're trying to do is uh, use these techniques to build better portable sensors. Um, and these become more useful uh, as we start to improve our, our manufacturing process, et cetera. But as I said, Stuart, we'll definitely touch more on that tomorrow. So, to kind of sum up, uh, we've, we, our main goal is unshielded portable sensors for everyday applications um, in a variety of regimes. And our biggest challenge to date has been periodic environmental noise and especially mains noise at 50 hertz. Um, and so far, the, the we've, we've taken a few different tacks in terms of uh, implementing software and hardware techniques, but uh, all going well. Um, we've, we've built some pretty cool sensors. Uh, and while first and foremost maintaining our portable, portable uh, setup. So I point you to our uh, group publications if you'd like to know more or please come and speak to me and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.